the great Hollywood purge is happening. Alan and I have been hearing this for a while uh, from people. And we're going to talk about it. Um, you and I were out last night, Alan, and you recounted a story of something that you heard you may, maybe you shouldn't have heard. Yeah. But this, all, all this does, before you get to your story real quick, want to set you up. All this does is actually just verify what we've already been hearing, which is that the contraction of Hollywood is basically getting a lot of people who are on the activist side an opportunity to pivot their careers to something else. Uh, could you tell the story and repeat the story you told me? Yeah. Uh, so maybe leave out the specific people. Yeah. Let, let's just say that uh, the story is something I overheard. Uh, it's, it's purely rumor and speculation, but there seems to be some credence to it, um, some credibility. And, and it kind of uh, explains a lot of the stories we've been talking about recently. Uh, uh, recently, we, we talked about how 20% of production in television and movies are being done in Hollywood, which is the lowest it's been in, a, uh, in its, uh, I think, in Hollywood history. Uh, and, you know, what it seemed like was that uh, Hollywood wants to save money. They want to go overseas. They want to take advantage of tax credits. There's some good economic reasons there. But what it also seems like is that they're trying to get rid of the activists in, uh, in Hollywood. Uh, by shutting off production, by moving production uh, out of California, uh, there's no more work. And the only people getting hired now are people who have experience, who, who know what they're doing. Uh, Script Doctor talks about talked about this a lot uh, on Verses and other shows he's done, um, and it seems to be there seems to be some credence behind that and, and some intention, meaning that this is not just an economic decision, but it's an intentional decision uh, to get rid of uh, an unwanted segment of of uh, of new new Hollywood talent, the activist talent. And, uh, you know, when I heard it, it's like, okay, I, I've heard Script Doctor talk about this. But then I started thinking about uh, what's going on at Disney. And it seems to seems to line up. For example, uh, <laughs> Chris broke on Critical Drinker <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, uh, that, that Marvel is changing, that, that there seems to be a new direction in Marvel. Um, also, uh, Pixar with Inside Out. Uh, Pete Docter, the the CEO, CCO of Pixar, uh, took Inside Out and just basically said, "We're telling a straightforward story," and uh, insisted and removed all all woke stories in there, uh, and thereby giving Disney uh, the highest earning uh, animated feature in in history. Um, and then we have Disney, and this is where I kind of want to focus focus this story uh, too, but. Um, Jennifer Lee was recently removed. Uh, she was the one who took over for John Lasseter, as uh, outlined in the D files. And uh, one of the first things she did on her first project, which was Ryan the Last Dragon, was to bring in a new and upcoming talent, mostly women, to give a 50 feet, 50 feet, 50 feet, 50 50 equal balance of men and women. But what wound up happening was not only were these women not uh, exactly great animators, but they were activists as well. And began creating this uh, this environment within Walt Disney Animation that caused all the veterans to leave. Uh, they either left because they couldn't stand uh, the environment anymore, or they left because they got fired because they got, you know, sent to HR. And um, and so, as we documented in the D files, just this slow and steady decline of the quality of movies coming out of Walt Disney Studios, uh, ending with Wish. And uh, in the last E-Files, I mentioned that there was a project that they were working on with uh, Susie Yanessi, uh, a Persian, I believe she's an Iranian uh, American woman. And uh, she was working on a the, the next Disney anime feature, which was supposed to come out this year, uh, in, in, which uh, Moana 2 took its place. And uh, they stopped the project. Uh, let's just say that from what I was told, they got far down the process uh, in terms of they got almost to the point where they could fully go, they could go in full production on the film and they canned it. And uh, if I were to connect dots here, 
uh, it appears that maybe that film was just too much of an activist film that, uh, that maybe it was hard to, uh, you know, it was going to be, it was going to suffer the same fate of wish. Let's just put it that way. And they canned the project and then they went to, uh, they went to Canada to finish Moana two which was originally a television series. And so what it seems like is, and, and let's also be real. The, the next movie is uh, from Walt Disney animations, frozen three, uh, which is down the road. Uh, you had all these people working on this old project that got canned. And it just seems like that with the removal of Jennifer Lee, uh, it's just a way to, to kind of get rid of that activist element and say, there's no work for you here. And, uh, and I think the hope is, is that, they can hold out long enough that Hollywood in general can hold out long enough uh, to where, you know, these activists uh, are going to have to find a new job. And uh, that's, that seems to be a, a good reason why a lot of these projects are leaving California. It may be good news because uh, if the plan works, uh, then those projects will come back to California and, and you'll have the veteran talent being able to go back to work and work on some real projects. At the same time, it's kind of cowardly. You know, if if you are trying to get rid of the activists, well, why don't you just say it? You know, why don't you why, why don't you just admit that the last few years across all the studios in Hollywood has been a colossal failure, that woke isn't working, and uh, and rather than try to use the subversive means to get rid of talent, just fire them. Fire them and start doing good stuff and, and bring work back to California. It's hard so, to fire anyone in this business and people people don't understand like it's it's film and tv is freelance mm -hmm. you don't have a job right? right you you are hired freelance for a project which takes place over a a finite amount of time when the project is over you are unemployed i know people who work in the industry and do very well they work 6 months of the year now they get paid quite a bit for the 6 months they do take unemployment, but they they basically live below their means because they don't know how much they might work only three months in a given year or not at all. But we have done story after story about people that are leaving Hollywood that are considering other career options. I know a producer from Attack of the Show that became a chef, went to culinary school because he can't get work in, in entertainment. So this is happening more and more. I think they're using the contraction of the industry as an excuse to get rid of certain types of people. And it's, it's, it's all about like, get on board with need to make things that make us money. Get back to that. Yeah, so but, I think yeah. there's going to be a pivot in the culture. I think things will will change, especially when the election is over. <laughs> just I just I want to get past all that and and whatnot. And but uh, you know that story which I told on Drinkers, uh, you know, open bar and got reported everywhere was a story I heard uh, early in the year. It was about 15, 16 people were let go, and they were all of the activist type at marvel and by the way that's not a lot of people but it were key positions and it wasn't something that was even announced because it was such a small group right so in any case yeah. um I, but, but my point about being fired i, I get it it's it, you know they're freelance and you can't really fire but but i think it was more to the point of i just wish someone would just up and say it that and admit that woke doesn't work go woke go broke that's what they've done. I just want someone in Hollywood. I think if if one of the big studios just said we tried it, uh, we we gave it forgotten country, and uh, you know, and uh, we're we're going back to the way things used to be, that 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 studio would get a lot of juice behind it, a lot of uh, respect from us fans. And uh, but we live in a time where where a no one wants to ever admit they made a mistake, and b this this idea of making a mistake and learning from it. Uh, is a is a powerful message, and I think this would make a powerful message by saying, "We we we were wrong, we were wrong, and we'll do better." Uh, then we're not speculating all the time about you know is James Gunn really going to give us a, a true Superman movie? Uh, you know why don't you just admit that that they've been made that that before he came with the Zack Snyder 
Justice League that that it was the wrong direction to go. Um, but you know, there, there's something for me. You it means something when a leader admits a mistake and learns from it and goes in the right direction. Uh, I I earn more respect for that leader than than if they were just uh, you know passive aggressively uh, fix the problem by by destroying an entire industry. Thank <laughs> you.